Welcome to Cocktail Hour. I'm Andy. And I'm the Rev. January 1st, 2011. Happy New Year, Rev. Happy New Year, Andy. And Happy New Year to all of our listeners. We are so happy to be ushering in a new year full of hopes and expectations and more Cocktail Hour. Yay. Yay. And speaking of Cocktail Hour, today's show is brought to you by Cure Royale. Champagne. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, for those of you listening, a Cure Royale is very simple. It's a half ounce of black currant liqueur and then your preference of champagne. So it's pretty easy. Would you call me? <laughs> no, that's my line. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of easy, that just <laughs> what a great segue into <laughs> what we're going to discuss today. Uh, we are. Well, wait a minute, going, wait a minute, what? wait a minute. I, w- I want to say how tasty my drink is. Oh, well, all right. How tasty is your drink? It's very tasty. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we can move on. Okay, let's move on. Uh, today's show, we're going to be discussing one of my absolute, positively favorite fanfics ever uh, Knights of Silk and Sapphire by Amber and Dark Side of the Moon by Bad Squirrel. And I heard that the Rev wasn't up for reading rereading porn recently, so <coughs> she did it not. It was really. It was early this morning, oh, you know. And Lord. I've already read it once. I know what's going to happen. <laughs> no, no new scene. <laughs> you know, there's not going to be any relief for me during the day when my family's around. And uh, well, that's true. So you yeah. know, yeah, but. <laughs> don't I, let that be a reflection on how much I actually enjoyed the story though <laughs> and I didn't <coughs> excuse me I didn't reread Dark Side because I've read it probably two or three times in the last couple of years so I think that one's pretty embedded in my head too yeah I think we're good to go I yeah. think we're right because I can't get I can't get most <laughs> of uh, Knights of, of Silk and Sapphire out of my head yeah it's a, it's long lasting isn't it it is. <laughs> <laughs> Just like Safira. <laughs> oh, God. we're going to have fun with this one. <laughs> ah, and just um, so you guys know, uh, we did ask Amber, of course, you know, it's usually my job to ask folks if they want to come on, and I always forget until the 11th hour. And I sent Amber an email seeing if by, you know, some slim chance she would be able to join us. And although she would love to, uh, she's actually going to be with friends and braving the wilds of the outback in Australia. Of course, she lives in Australia, but she's going to another part of Australia. And I guess camping is uh, about the best I can figure out she's doing. But we did post some questions because she opened that doorway. And uh, I guess we can talk about them after we discuss the uh, story. What do you think, Rev? Sounds good to me. Oh. Sounds good to me. Um, so which one do you want to start with? Should, should we start with... Um uh, uh, Dark Side of the Moon and then wrap up with uh, Knights of Silk and Sapphire and our Amber discussion? Sure. That sounds great. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Well, <clears throat> I, I did <coughs> finish reading, uh, rereading. Are you okay? Oh, I'm fine. Thank you, sir. Alright. It's still holding on, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> well, I'm feeling much, much better. Oh, raspberries to you. I don't want to spit yes. on my computer, otherwise I'd make the noise. <laughs> I'm sure you can find something to insert. Oh, Uh, yeah, there's always something to insert. (laughs) Naughty. (laughs) Well, it is the show, for God's sake. And it's a new year. I mean, this is what we've been reading for days. It's it's a a miracle that we can have, that we can utter a sentence that is not laden with sexual innuendo. Or followed by heavy moaning. Mm. Exactly. Okay, that's not, ag- I mean, that was, you know. That was a little too high pitch. Come on. I'm, if you're going to do I'm, it, make it sound believable. I'm actually more of a, a grunter. Are you? Yeah. That's a, <laughs> we're really getting personal on this show. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm trying to think. <laughs> it's been that long, huh? <laughs> hey. I'm just asking. We, we've been married almost 24 years now. Good Lord. Oh, shit, that was over five years ago, then. <laughs> I'm just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> I know there's no lesbian bed death in your house. 
you know, the, it's it's not too bad. You, we, you, I, I've discovered that you just have to uh, we just have to work on it a little bit more. We have to be a little bit more inventive. And and luckily, with uh, reading the kinds of things that that I've been reading, um, I, I really haven't that much had that much of a problem uh, coming up with some new stuff. So. Excellent. You know, you realize, listeners out there, that this may turn around their their sex life. You know, I have discovered that. Um, it's okay to uh, to take things that I read and you know incorporate them into uh, my repertoire. Excellent. In the boudoir. Excellent. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Repertoire in the boudoir. I got you. Woohoo! <laughs> I, I, I don't have a I don't have an ivory phallus, but um, you know I, that's the, I, I'm I'm opposed to you know the the slaughter of the elephants and yeah. all. So yes, yes, I understand. <laughs> Completely. <laughs> but there's nice, you know, there's other ones that uh, don't require slaughtering animals. That's true. Mm. You know, and I still, um, I still would eventually like to try a glass one, but they're just so damn expensive mm. that I, I just can't see it. So I have two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I know uh, Erin has one, and she said that she really likes it. Yeah, they're great. And that's what I understand that they because uh, part of it partly because of the uh, the heat, right? Yeah, you can actually you can put them in the freezer and make them cold. You wouldn't want to like have an icicle. I'm just saying, uh, or you can <clears throat> put them in uh, hot water and make them warm, and uh, not to be like gross or anything. But technically, you could put it in the dishwasher uh, <laughs> and clean it. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> could you imagine? And- Somebody come over and try and help you clean up the kitchen, and they open the dishwasher to empty it and go, what the hell? <laughs> that that kind of leads into our story. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Exactly. So, take her away, Red. Let's talk, give us a summary on Dark Side of the Moon. Okay, Dark Side of the Moon is actually part of a series by Bad Squirrel uh, of, I believe there are four stories that are centered uh, in in this one town, I think it's called Edgerton. Um, this particular story is uh, is set in a town just um, uh, a couple of hours away called Anderson, uh, I believe. Um, and at the very end, there's a little bit of uh, a little bit of overlap where you can see some of the characters, I believe, from the story Rumors. So anyway, so there's this four story series. It's got. Um, uh, well, two good stories and um, two mediocre stories as far as I'm concerned. But Shine was also very good. So there's my rambling uh, tie-in here. So, <laughs> um, so Bad Squirrel has written this story. This is more of a um, – it, it touches on S&M, uh, BDSM, um, some gender play, um, it's, it was very good. So here we go. It, it's the story of uh, a young woman, Sarah Wiley, who's just turned 21, and um, and her uh, and her employer, Jordan Crisp. It begins with Sarah going to uh, get a job at uh, Mr. Crisp's estate. So she goes in uh, and and finds out that the job is for uh, essentially um, kind of a, a housekeeper role but for a very specific location of Mr. Crisp's house. When Sarah walks in to, uh, to have her interview, the first thing, you know, the, her, uh, the butler head guy, Pete, um, keeps referring to Jordan as Mr. Crisp. Sarah walks in and immediately says, um, Mr., seriously, that's a woman. But decides... <laughs> You know, decides that if, um, you know, since she doesn't know the backstory, maybe Jordan is transgendered, maybe, you know, maybe maybe she used to be a woman, or, you know, whatever. So she just goes with it. And everyone else refers to, to Jordan as a man, so uh, she just goes with it. Um, it turns out that the job that Sarah is being hired for is to clean um, it's the dungeon where Jordan holds uh, BDSM parties for other folks. Um, Jordan is the dungeon master, and Sarah decides that, you know what, I can handle this. It's a great, great paying job. There's uh, a cottage, um, which is essentially really just a a house, 
on the estate where she'll live. It's as big as the house that she grew up in. Um, she's finishing. Um, I, I got a little confused here. I thought she was finishing her <laughs> undergrad, uh, but later uh, at the very end, it turns out that she actually got her uh, MBA um, at 21. So I'm not quite sure how that worked out, but the story kind of evolves uh, around the relationship between Sarah and Jordan. They become very good friends. Um, Sarah identifies as a lesbian. Um, and before uh, she actually confronts Jordan about being a woman, um, is almost, you know, initially is a little confused, uh, you know, about the vibes that she's getting because she's very attracted to Jordan. Um, and they kind of have this little happy, uh, little happy family between Jordan, Sarah, and the cook Maggie. Um, and there's some, you know, some um, psychological issues uh, stemming from Sarah's past that she has to deal with. Um, essentially, her parents kind of said when she hit ten years old, "You don't bother us. We don't bother you, and just go on about your business." Um, so she really doesn't know what it's like to be, um, to, you know, what it's like to be a part of a family type unit. Um, and then there's some betrayal and some drama and then there you go. Yep. Yep. That, that's a very good summary. You're really good at this. <laughs> my, my long rambling summaries. <laughs> you know, I, I enjoyed this story the first time I read it and each subsequent time thereafter. Um, but it occurred to me as you were discussing the story, you know, for a novel, if you will, that takes on the world of of bondage and uh, S and M. There really wasn't a whole lot of sex in the story. No, I, I thought that um, that I had remembered more sex. I think um, you know, there's there's a lot of discussion. There really isn't uh, any any real S and M in it. No. There's, um, there's some Dom sub and, yeah. uh, quite a bit of bondage. Yeah. I mean, well, not quite a bit, but there's some bondage, but no, you're right. <laughs> Tackle that world and not have a whole lot of sex. Go figure. Yeah. I mean, I think the, the one scene that, um, that I remembered after reading it the first time, the one that stuck in my head is, uh, when Sarah was tied to the bed and, and Jordan came out um, with uh, with the straight razor, and then shaved her, yeah. and then went down on her. Yep. Uh, that that was, I think, and, and maybe that's why I thought that there was more sex because that was the one thing that stuck out. <laughs> you know what stuck out for me what? when Sarah finally got to see Jordan's bedroom and it was all pink. <laughs> oh, I know. There were a lot of interesting, um, interesting gender type. Um, I mean, that's honestly even more than than the the BDSM aspect. I really think that it was more about about gender yeah. than than anything else. Yeah. You know, there's there's one line where Sarah says, um, you know, because Sarah's, you know, Jordan continually says, you know, but I I don't want to be a man. I love being a woman, um, but because of the way I look, it's just so much easier for me to to uh, portray myself as a man. It's what people want. It makes them more comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you know, Sarah's, you know, throughout a, a good part of the, of the story, Sarah's trying to get Jordan to actually admit that, you know, she also loves the part of her that's a man. Yeah. And she needs to, to embrace that and accept it. Um, I, there are so many places... Uh, in in the story where Sarah refers to Jordan sometimes in the same sentence as as he and she and, and I had I did have one example of that uh, and I loved this line um, a woman is is uh, is like kind of pawing on on Jordan and um, oh when she had her her study buddies over. Is that the one you're oh, talking no, about? No, no, no. This is this is much later. Oh. This is um, oh, this is after uh, after this is one of the women in Jordan's circle, oh. and and Sarah jumps up and says she grabs um, 
she she grabs uh, Jordan, and Sarah says, "Don't, don't you touch him. She's mine." Oh, I think that might have been a boo boo. I don't think so because um, because she because that's not the first time that that those things have happened. No, but I mean at the party when everybody's supposed to think that Jordan's a man. Was that the New Year's no, no, Eve this, party? Was there a no, New Year's Eve party? No, this is this is no, this was after Jordan after the newspaper article was uh was about to be released and Jordan told everyone. Oh, okay, okay. <clears throat> all right. So no, no, I don't think that I don't think that that was uh that that was an error at all. Um there were a couple of what, what, you you want to you want to talk for a little bit? Yeah, I really there were several times in in this story that uh surprised me with how she crafted um or weaved the tale you know um i thought it was especially interesting how the uh dungeon participants got together to donate blood uh to help sarah when she was in a near near fatal car crash how they all banded together <clears throat> to help save her life i thought that was pretty i thought that was pretty neat yeah, I, I, you know, they they really seem to come together as a community, and and um, you know, you don't have you try to dispel that image almost. Yeah, but then it was the same folks that pretty much turned their back on Jordan at the end, and I know that's probably a spoiler for anybody listening <laughs> listening, but it was just so gang, it was just you know so opposite scale or opposite end of of the stance that they had took to save somebody's life and here they're helping ruin somebody's life and i just i don't know or by lack of inaction pretty much um condoned what had happened to jordan toward the end yeah i was i was actually um shocked that she did it that way because it doesn't seem uh it didn't seem very realistic that that pretty much everyone or everyone would completely ignore her yeah yeah you know and like you said whether it was um, maliciously or you know they just didn't know what to say or whatever um i found that i found that hard to believe yeah after after she had laid out this tight-knit community Mm -hmm. yeah i i have a degree plus you know I would think that uh, even covertly they would try to find a way to still get together because Jordan wasn't charging them to get together and be in a safe environment to play. Hello, <laughs> you know? right? Well, well, she did. She did say that the that um, like the lesbian couples had wanted to be in touch, but uh, but what I think she she called it for a little tea party or mm-hmm. something, but. Yeah, that just seemed a bit a bit extreme. Yeah, you know what I thought was cute was uh, the emails that oh, the, yeah. Jordan and Sarah shared together. That was cute, and how Sarah was trying to make her list of do's and don'ts in the bedroom. <laughs> yeah, I th- that was that was actually um, kind of educational for me. <laughs> you know, it, it, I, I I enjoyed that. That was. Um, I would. What I wish we would have asked. Now that I'm thinking about it, is, oh no, we didn't talk to Bad Squirrel. It was the other one. No, I sent her an email, but uh, she has yet to respond. I'm gonna presume that she's out partying, and you know, <laughs> hasn't come down yet. <laughs> um, because she seemed to really try to. I mean, I've done. I've done some some um, BDSM reading, just like a lot of other people, and uh, the things that. You know, she really kind of laid these things out in such a, a, a matter-of-fact type of way. Um, a lot of the rules and, and the, the basics of, um, of what BDSM is and how, how the scenes are set up and safe words and, and the tools that are involved. Um, you know, I, I'm curious to know if it's something that, that she's actually into or if, or if she just did, um, you know, research for this. Well, you know, they say you should write about what you know. Yeah, but <laughs> with a lot of the shit that we read, I, I don't see that as... <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what else did you like? Uh, let me think. What else did I like? I really like that Maggie character. She was full of piss and vinegar. I love the, the when she says, um, um, you know, you, you like that portrait in the... 
in the entryway. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the naked portrait. And it and was... She says, it's me. Yeah, <laughs> she's like, it was me in my younger days. I'm like, damn, sister. Yeah, she was all about, you know what? You're young. You got a nice body. Get get going. Yeah, show it off. Do what you got to do. Oh, that's when they were dressing her up like um, like a harem girl. <laughs> Which, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll be talking about harem girls a little bit later. <laughs> but yeah, it was a really good story. Um, don't. You know, don't uh, let some of our criticisms deter you from actually reading it if you have an inkling to be intrigued about uh, this particular world in which this writer created. Yeah, I have a couple of um, things I want to call bullshit on, mm-hmm. and then and then one thing that I thought was kind of cool. Okay. Okay. So Jordan is the piercer for for everybody, right? Yeah. yeah. Everybody and uh, all of the players. Right. But when she pierced Sarah's ears, she used a fucking gun. No piercer worth their salt is going to use a gun. <laughs> I, I know a few tattoo artists and piercers, and um, and they laugh and ridicule people who use a gun. Huh. So I got a call bullshit on that. Okay. And then um, the other thing that I don't necessarily call bullshit on it, but I just I did not understand how Sarah could not utter the words "I love you," but she could say, you know, I just I can't say the words, but you know I do, and yeah, I, I love this about you, or I love that. You know what? I don't get that. Yeah, I, I understand that you had a really shitty childhood, really, really shitty, and you've never had anybody say that to you or whatever. But you know what? You can still say it. I don't get it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so there you go. And then the the thing that I thought was kind of cute was um, when Sarah was, san- was sitting out in the gazebo reading the trashy romance novel – and Jordan comes out and says, oh, what are you reading? And she goes, oh, it's just some trash. It's just some trashy romance novel. And, you know, <laughs> and she says, I mean, it's trash, but, you know, it's good trash. And then it comes to, come to find out that um, Jordan wrote that book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was good. I forgot about that. Yeah. And you can, you know, there were several <laughs> times um, while reading this that I was thinking, well, you know, the way Jordan talks, it's very flowery and... Um, very romance novel esque, mm-hmm. but you know maybe that's because that's she writes romance novels. So I kind of gave it a uh, gave it a pass. Yeah. Where normally I'd have been like, oh, nobody fucking talks like that. <laughs> but ultimately, I like it. Yeah, me too. I mean, considering I've read it two or three times. Yeah. So all right then. Anything else? Nope. I think that pretty much covers it. All right. So like I said. Um, you can go to uh, you know PDA Fiction and get get all four of uh, of um, Bad Squirrels stories compiled, or I'm sure it's I'm sure they're available at the Academy or the Athenium or any place else you find your favorite fan fiction archived. Excellent. Okay, so now let's talk about those harem girls. Oh yeah, <laughs> the harem girls. <laughs> <laughs> My patented purr came out. Yeah, that was kind of good. I mm. like that. Let me hear that one more time while I look this up. <laughs> That's nice, you know? You're very good at that. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm good at a few things. <clears throat> <laughs> Involving yeah. your tongue? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, throat, tongue, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a whole other discussion. Yes, but. it is. <clears throat> <laughs> All right. So, do you wanna you wanna do the the summary of this, or you want me to do it? No, 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 no. You are so fantastic at doing the summary. I don't even try. After I botched up, uh, call it Moody's story, seduction of Moxie. I don't even try them anymore. All right. Hold on. I need a drink. I know. Me too. I'm making uh, I'm making another one. All right. So, Knights of Silk and Sapphire by Amber. <laughs> Amber has uh, has three different stories um, that that uh, I found. Um, and the other two seem quite different from this one. Um, Knights, and Silk, Knights of Silk and Sapphire was apparently an exercise for the author on writing uh, sex scenes. Mm-hmm. So she, uh, she says it, that um, 
what started out as a as a short exercise turned into a novel length story, and uh, I got to say I, I'm glad that it did. Um, yeah, I didn't really me want too. To read it <laughs> when, when you and and Gloria um, were, and, and I think Jenny were beating up on me, yelling at me to read the damn thing, and I was like, oh, I don't want to read this shit. Um, but <laughs> you know what? I I really enjoyed it. So. Here, here's what we've got. So our story uh, kicks off with um, a short, blonde-haired, green-eyed woman named Day who, um, who has led a, a privileged, sheltered life far away from the desert. Um, she's been abducted by slavers. And um, pretty, pretty quickly after we get into this, you know, so start reading, uh, she's rescued by... Zafira al Intisar, the scion yeah. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. of the great city of El Kasari. She is um, black haired, blue eyed, tall, strong, mm-hmm. um, and very, 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 very sexual. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so she rescues Day. And, uh, and the rest of the, the women that were abducted. Um, she keeps Day to uh, be part of her harem, and the other women are sent off with her cousin, who, who is also there um, on that day. So Day is, is very dehydrated and, um, and wakes up a, a day and a half later being, ad- being attended to by uh, Anaya. Mm-hmm who is, um, who I, I gather is like the head harem girl. Um, and she explains today that you are now a pleasure servant of the scion. Um, and day is like, Oh, you people are freaking perverts. Uh, I don't, I don't roll that way. Um, no, I, I, I gotta get the hell out of here. And Anaya says, you know what? It's okay. The, the scion isn't going to force you. There are plenty of other women here who are more than happy to uh, to lay in her bed. So, you know, enjoy the luxury and, you know, enjoy life because this is where you're going to be from now on. Mm-hmm. Day doesn't really believe that that's what's going to happen. She's, she's certain. Well, first of all, she has no idea who the scion is. She's expecting some gnarly old dude um, who's going to rape her and force himself upon her, regardless uh, of what um, of what Anaya says? And then it comes out in that later in that conversation that the scion is actually a woman, and that's when Day kind of flips out. Um, so Day has her meeting with uh, with uh, uh, Zafira and um, and the scion assures her that you know what I'm I'm not going to force you. If you don't want to partake in pleasure with me, it's okay. I would like to be your friend and and share pleasure with you in other ways that are not sensual. Um, and Day is kind of just like, uh, what? Really? Um, rulers that she's familiar with don't do this. They they you know stay far. They you know they stay far away, uh, particularly from servants. So we have so. One part of the story is Day's growing relationship and awareness of her attraction to the scion, um, the scion falling in love with Day and kind of having a real tough time with not being able to express that physically with her, and uh, Shakir al Jadin, who is a head of. Uh, of the, this other tribe who is trying to essentially overthrow um, the scion and the and and capture the big city there's um, you know some issues about the secrets of Han, uh, about how to purify or how to desalinate seawater to make it safe for drinking and and um, Shakir has obtained guns which they don't have you know so um, there's so there's this whole other thing going on. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's kick it off from there. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, man, I tell you, there's not one part of this story that I don't like. Not one. But the first time I read it, 
I pretty much skipped over the backstory. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay, wait, wait. No. <laughs> Let me back up. The first time I read it, I actually read it all the way through from first, first word to last word. But every subsequent read, including the one I did for this show, uh, I actually skipped over the backstory. I didn't care about El Rifael. I didn't care about the cousins. I didn't care about, you know, the warring tribe. I didn't give a shit. I just wanted to read about the harem. I wanted to read about Day going from from this uh, innocent with all these prejudices uh, that she grew up with uh, to the point where she has embraced uh, uh, the uh, seraglio and the culture and you know, her sexuality and her uh, attraction and subsequent love for Zephira, which is essentially what this story is all about. It's about an innocent who becomes a tigress. <laughs> um, it's, and I loved it. I, I, there's so many parts of this story that just, I'm like, wow, I wish I could have thought of that. That's absolutely brilliant. <laughs> I mean, the characters were interesting, whether they were, I mean, not just Day and... and Zephira. I mean, Anaya was interesting, and I'm sorry, but I did not write notes on the other names of some of the harem gals that we learn of, because oh, they're. You know, I think the only ones that were really important were that were the other couple. Um, well, and their one playmate. They had a playmate. Uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. With, I didn't get that far. With I the phallus. Hello, I had the phallus. Oh no. No, I, I believe me. That's that is uh, that is one of the uh, actually that is the part that stands out the most to me when I remember this story is how um, there's a scene <laughs> there's a scene where uh, there's this uh, joined couple um, who one of their names starts with a J and the other one I think is is uh, starts with an H um, and that's as far as I'm gonna get yeah with Hi that one right now. Hiam was one of them right H A Y A M Hiam yeah 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 oh and here's Jahara Jahara, Jahara that's Hiam. it yeah um, so they're joined and um, and not in a sexual well they were but yeah. well, they, yes yeah, as in married. <laughs> Ooh, and, and that was one of the things that, you know, that, that also came up in, in the beginning with Day's uh, education about how things ran in the harem. Oh, let, let's take a step back. Let's take a step back. Okay. So in the harem, there are 20-some <laughs> women in the, in the harem. Um, and Zephira encourages them to share their desire with each other as much as as they do with her they, you know so essentially they're almost like this big happy fucking family literally literally <laughs> um, Elysium so, the Elysian what? fields it's the Elysian fields okay go ahead on. <laughs> so so uh, Anaya and Day are in the garden and um, and Day notices that Jahara and Hayam are um, are like up in a tree, um, and they're they're making out and touching, and and Day says to Anaya, you know, won't the scion be angry that they're doing this? And um, and Anaya says, well, no, you know, they're in love. They they they're married, and um, and Zafira did their joining ceremony and she and day says oh well okay so that they don't sleep with Zephira anymore well no they but they're now is one so if Zephira wants to have one for the night she knows that that they both have to come you know really? <laughs> <laughs> So, so anyway, so as the story progresses, you know, Day becomes more aware of these, uh, of the yearnings and, and the way her body responds. And, you know, she, she begins by, by touching herself. And I love how, how they talk about how loud she is. <laughs> yeah. When she learns the art of self-pleasuring. Mm -hmm. She does it, and, what, in, in the evening and in the morning when she gets up. She's all up into it. Yeah. And, um, and there's, there's, before she allows anyone to touch her, that's her big thing is she doesn't want anybody else to touch her. Um, and, 
and I, I, I believe now, like I said, I haven't gotten to the, hadn't gotten to this part again, but doesn't Anaya, aren't they like walking by or something and she hears uh, Jahara and Hayam and this other woman in their room because there are no doors? This is the first scene where we meet uh, Hayam and the other one. Okay. Okay, that's the one you're talking about, that scene? No, I don't think it's a, I don't know if it, no, I don't think it's a, first, I'm talking about the one where, where, where the, the, where somebody's tied up. And oh, no, that's the second one. No, yeah. that day was by herself. She was on, she knew the cyan was coming back and she uh, heard noises, so she decided to go investigate and that's when she found Haim and, what is her name? Jahara. Jahara, jeez Louise. Yeah, Jahara, uh, busy entertaining someone. <laughs> Yeah, that was, you know, I loved that. I loved that. I mean, obviously, yeah, <laughs> you would think that I would, but I did. That was, you know, it was so, uh, the the imagery, I believe, was so good. I could see it in my head, you know, the shadows and, and yep. you know, it was really, really good. And this has been quite a while since I've read it. Um, and and I, it still stands out to me. The, you know, the, and the, the, one of the things I thought was the most interesting is that um, isn't it Johara that's giving like the 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 blow by blow description of what's going on and see how she's this and notice mm-hmm. how you know yep. how she calls out or whatever. Yep, yep, she does. Yeah, it, it was it was really good, um, and I gotta say that I really enjoyed. The uh, the the backstory as well. The whole um, the way that that day helps uh, the Scion in coming up with a way to defeat the 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 bad guys. Mm-hmm. I thought that was really good. Yeah, because she knew what rifles were, right, and, and how and they work. How, right, how the powder works and and all of that. I thought that was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there was also the head scout and her woman. Right. Yep. Yeah, I hadn't gotten to that part in, in in my reread, but I remember that. Yeah, but I skipped over the parts that weren't involved with him <laughs> on my la- on my last reread. <laughs> I do have to call bullshit on a couple things. All right, lay it on. Okay. All right. Um, in in pretty 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 far in the or it's kind of in the beginning in the well in the first half of the of the, <laughs> the story. Um, Safira realizes that she is having some type of really strong feelings toward Day, mm-hmm. um, and and figures out that none of the other harem girls are going to be able to satisfy her. They're not going to be able to bring that release. Only Day will be able to do that, uh, and so she goes. So she's abstinent for eight days and the harem just falls apart. Like, <laughs> They're like, what oh the my hell? God. Oh my God. The world's coming natural. to an end. <laughs> Something horrible is going to happen. I'm just thinking, come on, eight days, give me a break. But then she almost kills that woman. Jesus. I know, right? It's like the woman has to be taken out on a, on a gurney for fuck's sake. I was like, holy <laughs> shit, she had bite marks on her and bruises and shit. And poor old Day's like, what the fuck? Of course, fuck wasn't in her vocabulary. But that was, <laughs> that was you know, what you came away with. Day's like, holy shit, man, what the hell? And then when she finds out that, that you know, Zafira was, was fantasizing that Day was the woman that they hauled out on the stretcher. Yeah, yeah, that poor harem girl was uh, Day by proxy. Yeah, yeah, but she had a smile on her face. Yep, yeah, she was comatose with a smile. There and she go. smelled like sex. I love how they made sure that they put that in there. Dave's like, what's that smell? <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, and, and they, they, you know, she did a nice job, too, of not just focusing on the sex. I mean, it really is. It's, it's incredibly sexual, uh, very erotic. Um, the setting you know, just lends to, to, to enhancing that feeling. Um, but, but she also takes the time to, uh, you know, to, to let the reader in on the emotional aspect of, of day and Safira's, uh, relationship, you know, when they're going through the, through the, through the city and they spend time talking and, you know, things like that. Yeah. Yeah. 
I, I thought it was much more of a uh, of a rounded story than what I had expected. Yes, it is, and that's really quite the surprise. Mm-hmm. It may have been, uh, you know, an erotic exercise for Amber, but I think she did a very, very good job at capturing uh, the harem girls that you do get to meet, uh, the development of the two protagonists, uh, in, in a in a really in some ways, in a sweet, in sweet ways, actually, uh, and yeah. it wasn't. It wasn't just like reading pornographic literature, although that's exactly what <laughs> what you know. Red basically said over on cocktail hour, she wasn't up for reading porn, but it really, it really isn't. I mean, it's not like you know, opening up a, a men's magazine and reading some of the mouth of the form or something. It, no. It's just very tastefully <clears throat> done. <laughs> you know, I, I have I have two uh, two friends. Who I who I suggested that they read this. Um, one of my friends, who is a is a new convert to Lesvek, um, just recently got her into it. When I got the iPad, I sold her my e-reader. Uh, so you know she's she's. And then I, I I gave her a few fanfics and and uh, pointed her pointed her in the direction of some good books. And now she's now she's she's good to go. Um, her and her wife were traveling by plane to New York and and I kept telling her don't read this shit at work don't read it any place where you can't get to a private spot to take care of business you know? <laughs> so I get a text message uh, from from her shortly after they landed in New York saying holy crap I finished the story while I was on the plane I thought I was going to lose my mind <laughs> Did they check in the hotel like po- uh, like Toot Sweet? <laughs> I don't know if they made it to the hotel. <laughs> they may have just pulled the rental car over. I'm not really sure what was going on, but Holy that was God. it was hilarious. Um, and then another friend of mine who I, I talked to uh, on Thursday and, and asked her specifically about this because she didn't like it. I um, still find that hard to believe. And, and I know that you and I talked about it, but so I tried to get some some more solid information about what it was that she didn't like. And, and she had a hard time putting it into words, but essentially, um, you know, she said that 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 she would have, that, that it wasn't sensual at all, which, which I didn't agree with. No, I, mean, I don't I, either. I think it was very sensual. Yeah, I do too. I really do. But, yeah, I, I think... You know, I think she started it, and then I don't think she, I know that she didn't finish it. So that's almost I don't know. sacrilegious, quite frankly. I I know it. I know it's horrible, horrible. <laughs> but because um, I actually I invited her on to uh, to talk with us about it and maybe share some of the things that that didn't sit well with her or that she couldn't get into or, or what have you, and and she declined and, and said that she would love to come and talk with us uh, another time when when there were stories that she enjoyed more. And she didn't read Dark Side of the Moon. She read Shine and really liked it, and then read Rumors and, and was pretty much done after that. Hmm. Well, I, I still like, think that uh, Amber's Best was nice, and I did read the other <laughs> stories. And not just because of the, well, no, not just because of the sex. Seriously. I just, I liked how she, um, I, I just think she came into her own. I think this was... You know, this was the best of all of them, uh, which is going to be really hard for her because we both know that she's working on a sequel to Knights of Silk and Sapphire. Mm-hmm. Oh, one thing I wanted to, to mention that, that she talked about in the email, because I know that I said that you could ramble on about that, but I I, <laughs> but I want to ramble on You're about the this. rambler of the group. I just, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm the comic relief at this point. I know, I know. Um, one of the things that Amber said that, that people gave her crap about was the fact that uh, Day's first time wasn't with who we thought it should be with. You know, the, the first time yeah, that but, she actually let someone else touch her. Yeah, but I don't think that was, she was with Anaya. I mean, it just, you know, it was a little grooming gone a little wild. <laughs> Girls gone wild, that's what that was. But, it, it, you know, it, it, it wasn't... You know, it, it was, was it was her first orgasm, not by herself. Yeah, uh, yeah, I don't understand why. You know, lesbitarians how they are. Seriously, I know, on. but 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 you know, and I, 
you know, if you look at the things that we normally read, I mean, that that, that are pervasive in in the genre that we that we specialize in, you know, there's that soulmate thing and that means monogamy and uh you know if if those two people aren't the ones that that have good sex and stay together um just the two of them then there's something wrong and and people wig out and and i can see where i can see where that would have been a problem for people with this story um you know i i think i don't think it's i don't think it's much of a spoiler um, to say that um, Zafira is not going to give up the harem, yeah. no, matter, no matter what's going on, because it's the culture. That's the culture that they're in, and and even though the, when I was reading it the first time, I, I expected, I expected Zafira to give up the harem what? because that's what I'm, but, but because that's what I'm conditioned to to expect from the things that we read. You fall in love, you find your soulmate, yada yada, and then all is right with the world. There's no one else. But but Amber takes a different turn with this, and and it's exactly what it should have been, in my opinion. I don't think that she should have had Day and Zafira be. Um, be monogamous because it goes against everything that Zafir has been talking about throughout the entire story. Yeah, that was so, you would be calling bullshit on that if she had. You're damn right, I would. So mm-hmm. I give her, I give her absolute credit um, for sticking to that. Yeah. Um, but I can, but I can totally see. I mean, that's like, you know, that's like a, a, a Zena Gabrielle story where. You know, uh, Gabrielle ends up with Najara at the end. You know, yeah. people are like. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I mean, come on. That woman was a freaking nutbag. <laughs> okay, well... Uh, <laughs> I mean, me? seriously. Or or Callisto either. I mean, come on. You know what I mean? No, no. Okay. So so she ends up with Effany. Let's, uh, well, yeah. I never was a big Effany fan. But I get your point. <laughs> I do get your point. <laughs> We're moving on. <up laughs> yeah, let's <laughs> move on. <laughs> <laughs> so, so and Amber, Amber's talking about the sequel... Go ahead. Oh, I don't want to give the sequel away. Who the hell knows how long it's going to take her? I remember oh, writing her oh. last year. Of course, she doesn't probably remember. I wrote her last year. I'm like, sister, where is that sequel? <laughs> Let's go. Come on. <laughs> and, I don't uh, know. She might remember since she, she mentioned the orgy scene. <laughs> she did mention the orgy scene. <laughs> yeah, that's what we have to look forward to in the sequel. All the harem's going to get together in one big, giant fuck rama <laughs> I'm waiting for that one, damn it. I mean, come on. Everybody buy stock in Duracell. Because, mm, come on now. <laughs> That's going to be hot. <laughs> hot. I think it's okay for us to, to give a, a just the basic gist of what the sequel would be about. Well, we could. I got I the email right here. You want me to read it from the email? No, no, no. I'll just say it. Okay, say it then. Okay, so um, Day's family comes to, to rescue her and essentially sends her to reprogramming camp. <laughs> <laughs> but mom, I'm a lesbian. What are you doing? Yeah, yeah. So that's that's kind of what it's about. And Zafira's like, oh, hell no. I worked hard for that shit. <laughs> that's right. That's my consort, goddammit. I'm going after that's my right. woman. <laughs> that's right. So, so in a nutshell, that's what the sequel's about with, an, with the orgy scene. And she said the, I like that she said the orgy scene's like twenty some pages long. I know I'm a, I almost got the attack of the vapors when I read that part. I was like, oh god, please, please tease us. bring it on, sister, bring it on. Maybe you could volunteer to be a beta, or or oh, that was one thing I did notice that I didn't I didn't um, I don't remember if I noticed the first time is there there's some some very very small things that um, that a beta probably could have caught. Like just little misused words, like loose instead of loose, or loose instead of lose, uh, the wrong form of two. You know, just little things, yeah, little, kind of like little, my, little tiny things. Like my Facebook posts. I swear, I need you to <laughs> debate my my posts before I put them up. It's just pitiful. <laughs> That's pitiful. okay. Mm, mm, mm. So uh, the reason why uh, is one of the things I ask Amber is like, you know, when do you think you'll be done with this, you know, sequel for God's sake, for the love of all that's holy. And she said that, uh, 
most of the reason why she hasn't finished it is because she's pretty much set aside writing in favor of her artwork, which I applaud the fact that, uh, you know, she's branching out and, and doing her art and that she's consumed by it. And, and I saw she gave us a link to look at her artwork, which I think we'll put on the show notes. I don't think Amber would have a problem with that. Oh, uh, not you, at all. If you uh, want to see it. Okay. Yeah, if you want to see it. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's beautiful. I, I'm not going to say it's not, but, you know, damn. I think what we all need to do after you read the story is everybody barrage her with emails. Where is <laughs> We want the sequel. We want the sequel. Because, you know, feeding the birds works. I think that's part of the reason why she keeps going back to it, even though, uh, you know, so much time has lapsed, because, you know, people are stroking her ego. In the email, she said that, um, what, what was the primal touch? Is that the name of one of them? She said something about that being published, and being the lazy ass I am, I, I didn't bother to uh, actually uh, look that up. Hold on a second. Well, I'll I remember. Right she, now. I remember she said she had a. a oh, publisher. there it is. Primal Touch on Amazon uh, by Amber Jacobs. Well, there you go. Oh, let's see. Well, it ain't available on ebook. God damn it. <laughs> Amber, you're not getting any money, sister. Get it on Come ebook. On. Amber, let me do a different one. Amber Jacobs. Let me see. Paperback, paperback, paperback. Oh, Lordy. You just missed your twelve ninety nine from uh, Rev. Mm-hmm. Blue Feather. Oh, no, wait a minute. Because uh, doesn't, doesn't Blue Feather offer? Mm. All right, well, well, we can look at the, into that later. But um, so she did actually... Uh, uh, publish Primal Touch. I'll just go ahead and read really quickly the synopsis for Primal Touch, and then if you have the the urge, uh, go buy it um, and let us know what, if you liked it. Uh, Ashley Richards, a successful wildlife photographer, accepts an assignment in the jungles of India. Rumors of a legendary white tiger lead her to extend her stay, and she crosses paths with a ruthless poacher. She is rescued by the feral and mysterious Leandra Thornton, only to be caught up in her deadly vendetta. Worlds collide, lives end, and begin anew in the pages of Primal Touch. So there you go. I don't know how different the published version is from the online version that I read, but I did enjoy that story. Did you? I have I have both of them loaded up. What's the other one? Primal Touch and uh, the other one was, uh, if I rem- it, it seemed like it was more of a, uh, let me see here, um, like a, a fantasy genre. Is, is that right? Yeah, it sounds, yeah, yeah. I knew you should have looked. Freedom's Heart. Oh, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the, here's the first uh, the first sentence. Jessica de Grand cleared the outer walls of the castle, laughing wildly as she urged the gray mare under her to even greater speed. So there's a castle. So I'm yeah, isn't that the one be... where that some poor gal who's on her own? She she was never she may have been a slave, may not have been a slave, and <clears throat> she winds up sharing a camp with these cutthroat bandits. And she gets taken as like a spoils of war, and uh, she's owned essentially by the castle princess. Is that that story? Is that the one? I ain't read it. Oh, oh, oh. oh. All right. <laughs> oh, I here, think this is a. It says. Um, uh, I'm, I, I have it. I got it from um, PDA. Okay. So. Um, Let's see. It says, this is a Uber Xena story, however, so naturally there are elements of the warrior uh, and bard to be found in the two central characters. Uh, let's see. Violence, yes. There are a few scenes containing fairly graphic violence. Medieval England was a pretty bloody time and place to be alive. Um, na na na. <laughs> yeah, so it, 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 that's what it looks like, that it's, it's set in uh, the medieval times, which I really like. Yeah, um, so I do. Yeah. Shit, I may I may read this next. Yeah, I I you well we've established the fact that I'm a period piece hoe, so Absolutely. anytime I can get, you know, medieval Civil War like Kay Thompson's uh, House of Clouds, which was good, um, you know, any, I've never read that. Oh, it's very good actually. And she's working on 
as we speak, she is working on a story that takes place around the uh, American Revolutionary War. So, no, who, who does, Bella, does she, she does, it's a Bella book? No, I think she's Bolt Strokes author. Oh, well, good, at least I know I can get it. Uh, on ebook. Ebook. But not every one of the uh, books out there that Bold Strokes carries is an ebook. I've noticed a couple that I wanted to get, and I'm like, what? It's not an ebook? God damn it. <laughs> get all nutty. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Bold Strokes, not all of them are? <clears throat> well, at least <clears throat> two that I wanted to buy weren't on uh, ebook yet. Maybe it was the timing was off. I don't know. Hmm. This was hmm. a couple of months ago. Who, which, which ones were those? I don't Do you remember? No, I don't remember. That's okay. Okay. Um, well, yeah, that's what, House of what? House of Clouds. I read um, Nan Dunn's uh, War Between the Hearts. Was that, that, did you read that? No, not, no, not yet. That was uh, that was set in the Civil War. I reviewed it on the on the thing. It, it could have cut out a bit of it, and I think it would have been a bit better. You know, there are only so many times that you can almost get what you want and have it slip away before the reader is just like, "Oh, come on!" Yeah, for yeah. For fuck's sake, we know what's going to happen at the end. How many times do we have to go through this? But it was good. I, I did enjoy it. There was the whole. Um, gender bender type thing going on. I really did enjoy it I, outside of that one little bit. I like the gender bending stories. I, I really do. like them. There was one I read, oh my hell. It was when I first found fanfic on the net and God, it's, it's not that hermaphrodite one again. No, no, no. Although, thank you for posting that link. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate it. Yes. Um and thank you to Dale for finding it for me. Uh it it was set during the American Revolutionary War. I think it was. It might have been the Civil No, you know what? It might have been the Civil War. <clears throat> and it was a Northern or Southern... I don't, I don't remember if it was the nor uh, a Northern soldier or a Southern soldier uh, was wounded. And they <laughs> take... He shot. <laughs> yeah, right. They take him, quote-unquote him, to uh, a home and have the woman of the house take care of him while the rest of the troop goes off to battle. And I, I think the soldier was shot through the lay or some craziness. So it was going to be one of those long rehabilitations. And in the meantime, they really get to know each other and they fall in love. But, of course, the mistress of the house has no idea that this soldier is a woman. Do, is she a widow and does she have a son? I don't remember. This is like I, six years ago. I can hardly remember what I ate last week. Seriously, it sounds like... like War Between the Hearts. I it sounds like Nan Dunn's book. No, no. It had sex. Could have been Nan Dunn. Oh, but but with Nan Dunn, there there was a, a twist. Is that the woman who was a soldier was actually a spy for the other side. So she was really a spy for the North fighting in the Confederacy. Hmm. No, that doesn't ring any bells. Uh, well, you need to figure out which one that was because I love, 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 love hey. those those time uh, thing. I thing. I give you more than you gave me with the ivory phallus and <laughs> and you didn't find shit. I didn't find the ivory phallus, but I brought it up on the conquer with Sue and said, "Yo, this is a good time. Maybe she can help you find it." I mean, I have at least more of a story plot than you did. Whatever. Gloria found it, too. So even if you wouldn't have done that, we still would have had it. Gloria, what story is she fucking talking about? <laughs> well, there might be two or three that are similar. <laughs> but I could have sworn there was sex in this one, so... <laughs> it couldn't have been me, I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm just saying. Come on, now. <laughs> There's some people that <clears throat> just <clears throat> don't write erotica or <clears throat> sensual or love scenes or just flat-out sex scenes. <clears throat> there are just some authors that won't do it. All right, so are we done talking about um, about Amber and Bad Squirrel? I think we're done talking about Amber and Bad Squirrel. I do want to recommend Shine by Bad Squirrel. Just saying. I liked it. Okay. So you there you go. Recommend all the way. Go ahead. And then um, if, if you want to buy paper books, um, go buy Amber's uh, Primal Touch. Yeah. Uh, or, look, or read it... Um, Read it online. PDA Fiction has them. Yay, yay, yay. Yeah. Um, okay, so well, these were really good stories. And, um, yeah, they were good. 
Yes, they were very. They were very good. <laughs> I'm, I'm almost done with my second glass. Me too. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So next, we briefly talked about this today. Are we, are we solid? I think we're solid. Are we okay? So I'm going to read Catherine Friend's um, Spanish Pearl. Uh, mm-hmm. There is a sequel if you're interested. If you get through Spanish Pearl and you want to continue on with the with the characters, um, the second one is called The Crown of Valencia, and I liked it as much, if not more, than uh, than Spanish Pearl. You know, I bought Crown of Valencia in paperback about two years ago. I mean, not long after whenever it came out. It was like, you know, Amazon said. Oh, coming in May, and I bought it in May, but it's sitting on my shelf, and I absolutely I haven't actually cracked it open to read it. I really I liked it. I liked it. Um, we can talk about it more next time. I don't want to. I don't want to talk about it too much. But um, there's some evil little tie-ins, and it was good. I really liked it. Um, so we're going to read Spanish Pearl by Catherine Friend, and I'm going to let you tell us who the other one was because um, I don't remember. <laughs> I believe it's pronounced Teopa or Teopi Key Lakota. By Teopa. Teopa. I, I did see that. <laughs> Excuse me. Teopa Key Lakota by D. Jordan Redhawk. Okay, so listeners, we got the Spanish Pearl and, La, uh, and Teopa Key <laughs> Lakota uh, for next time. <clears throat> yep. All right. Well, thank you all for listening and have a very uh, prosperous, safe, and healthy new year. Bye. Ciao for now.